Yo, what's up? It's Carl Arrieta and I'm here right now in Rancho Palos Verdes in California. I'm on top of this little rock face. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I wanted to be up close to the camera because we we're dealing with some epic winds and I don't want to deal with uh, listening to my videos with some epic winds again. So that's why I'm up here, up close and personal, in your face, in the camera. And uh, maybe a little bit later I'll kind of do a little panorama of uh, exactly where I am. It's pretty cool. I'm afraid of heights. Um, <laughs> but here I am anyway. Don't ask me how I got here. Here. Uh, it's actually not that hard, but still I'm a little bit squeamish when it comes to heights. But anyways, I already digress. Um, so the, my last video was about, you know, one of the, you know, the causes of negativity. And I thought it was going to be like a three-part series. And I think it still is going to be a three-part series. And uh, so right now I want to deal with reason number two. And I think there's going to be like a 2A and a 2B. And you'll see exactly why. So what is one of... So first reason, right, was like, you know, we're kind of like in this matrixy, uh, unconscious haze and we get poked with some kind of negative stimulus and it kind of, kind of wakes us up. It's like a dirty high where it's like, you know, we actually like the feeling of negativity. We actually like being angry. So that kind of ties into, you know, like why the media sometimes prods us into some kind of emotional reaction because it wakes us up, right? So, you know, what is the second reason for why you know we fall into negativity well I believe that people live their lives in content um, with the world relative to a profession that does not exist so what do I mean by that for well for example let's take a concept that everybody gets mad about very easily uh, how about racism Right? That's a really big one. Um, every time you see in the news, like, you know, this guy's being racist, this girl's being racist, this celebrity's being racist, this guy said, said some racist things, this cop said something, this politician said something, and then we go, holy crap, oh my God, F this guy, this guy sucks, da 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 da. I mean, that's like, you know, it's maybe there's no hot topic right now in the news, but there's always gonna be something that pops up, you know, in the media, and it's like, look at this guy, he's being racist, and everybody goes, holy crap, right? So that always happens. So why does that? really happen well here's the thing we have to accept the world for what it is I mean I understand racism is bad uh, don't get me wrong right so racism is definitely a bad thing there's def definitely been many examples in our history where it had some grave consequences and no we don't want that you know we've had a lot of leaders you know like Martin Luther King who uh, made great strides to try to improve racial um, tolerance I guess you could say and um, I don't want to discount those efforts by any means necessary but what I, what I really mean is that, you know, at the end of the day, we're never going to be able to stop out something like racism. It's going to be there till the day I die. It's going to be there until after we die. It will always be there. It will never go away. I mean, we can do as much as we can to try to curb it and try to manage it and try to encourage people to not be racist. But at the end of the day, there's going to be some people who are going to be racist. You're not going to be able to change their minds. You're not going to be able to stop it. And it's like, at the end of the day, what does that matter to you? How does that hinder your life? I mean, you know, it's like at the end of the day, you feel sorry for that person for being racist after all. It's, it's their problem, not your problem. But what my, my really big point is that because it's gonna be there always, you know, you might as well accept it, right? Um, you, we have to accept the world for what it is. There is gonna be, there's some a lot of great and good things in the world, but there's also a lot of bad things. And there's some things that we cannot change and we just have to kind of accept it for what it is. And that is the beauty of the world, that there is a yin and a yang. And you have to accept the bad because without the bad, there is no good. And I guess the two B, Okay, two, like B, <laughs> uh, so wait, that was two A. So two B, in terms of reasoning for why we get upset, is because, or we get negative, okay? It's because we get negative or mad because we want to change it, and it's our way of trying to change it. Eckhart Tolle, in this book, The Power of Now, talks about how, you know, people get negative, people get upset, because, you know, it's their way of trying to change a situation. And his mind is completely nuts. It's completely crazy, which I absolutely agree with. I mean, you know, you can see a situation, you know, and it's like, you know, you don't agree with it, you don't approve of it, you don't like it, and then you try to be negative or mad in order to try to change it. 
what's an example of that? Well, for example, like let's say relationships. How many times in our relationships when you know somebody does something that we don't like and we get negative at them because we're trying to change their behavior, trying to change their habit, trying to change their mind? Um, what's a good example? Let's say you know our significant other forgets to take out the trash. You know, how many times have we all gone, you know, we told that person, what the heck? Why didn't you take out the trash? You are so irresponsible. How many times do I have to tell you to take out the trash? I am so disappointed in you. I am so mad at you. And on and on and on it goes. And you're just, it's just like, you do that because you want to change this person. You want to change that behavior. You want to convince them that, hey, you need to take out the trash. But at the end of the day, when you do something like that, let's reverse it, right? How many of us appreciate being on that receiving end of that kind of negativity, of that kind of shaming, of that kind of you know guilt tripping, uh, or just like offensive attacks, you know, just to try to change that other person? It's not fun, right? I mean, we've all been there, and um, you know, just. And I guess the whole greater point of why I'm trying to do this is trying to illustrate the fact that you know, understand why negativity negativity exists, why we do it why we you know, like to percolate in that emotion and then how to actually find ways to you know, do something more constructive and more e effectively. And I mean, yeah, we can be negative. Yeah, we can, call, we, we can be like, you know, like try to shame somebody into doing something, but you could also be really cool about it. You could also be really nice about it. You can just be like, hey man, like, or hey girl, <laughs> you know, like it'd be really cool if you take out the trash, you know, it's just like, you know, there's always a, a, a nicer way of doing things. Like, you know, hey, listen, I'd really appreciate it if you took out the trash. Um, you know, just obviously it's going to make the house really messy. So it'd be really cool. I'd really appreciate it. You know, I mean, you agree, right? There's always a cooler, nicer, more positive way of doing things. I mean, you know, going back to the race thing and going back to somebody like Martin Luther King, I mean, you know, he, yes, he did resist and tried to change, you know, some of the bad things that was, that was going on in terms of racism, but he did it in a very peaceful, positive way. Um, he didn't try to do things with violence or to try to, um, you know, get mad at people and just like, you know, call them names or whatever. You know, that's, he was getting called the names, right? But he didn't force that upon somebody else. He didn't use that as a tactic to try to change people. He used, he used peace. He used positivity. You know, like, you know, I guess uh, uh, another way of doing it is like, you know, uh, Malcolm X, who did a little bit more negatively. And uh, you can look that up as far as, you know, how he did things. But, um, you know, he definitely wasn't as nice about it as uh, MLK. But um, either way, you know, enough of the history lesson. That's kind of just uh, what I wanted to talk about today. Um, that went a little bit long, but that's okay. You know, um, if you have been watching this and gotten this far, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, I guess uh, I will go into my next video blog talking about the third reason for why people get negative. And until then, everybody, take care. Okay, yo, so here I am. I'm gonna give you a little, like I said, the panorama of exactly where I am. Here we go. Fun, huh?